If you're a homeowner, you're probably thrilled that home prices in many parts of the country are at all-time highs. When your home value increases, so does your equity and your net worth. But what if you need to buy a home? Not only are prices sky high, but mortgage interest rates and home insurance premiums can put home ownership out of reach for many Americans. If you have existing home equity, you can use it to purchase your next home. However, suppose you have little or no equity, or you're not a homeowner. In that case, you must have plenty of savings to cover various closing costs, including a down payment, mortgage underwriting fees, appraisal, survey, title insurance, transfer fees, recording fees, and more and more and more. If cash is tight, you may wonder if you can use your retirement account to cover some of the closing costs. This podcast will review the rules for using your workplace retirement plan or individual retirement account IRA to buy a home. Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Laura Adams, an award-winning author, money speaker, founder of the Money Stag newsletter, and host of the Money Girl podcast with 43 million downloads. I also work as an on-camera financial spokesperson and partner with select brands for PR and content marketing. As always, you can learn more and email me at lauradadams.com. And if you have a money question or a comment, I would love to hear it. Please leave it on our voicemail line at 302 360 I'd love to answer your question on a future show. If you're a Money Girl listener, you probably know that a traditional 401k or 403b are tax-advantaged, employer-sponsored accounts that help you save for retirement and reduce your taxable income. You make pre-tax contributions, and then you pay income taxes when you make withdrawals in retirement. Well, because retirement accounts come with such great tax benefits, there are many rules you have to follow to avoid taxes and penalties. For example, when you withdraw funds before age 59 and a half, or it could be 55 if you decide to retire that early, withdrawing funds that were not previously taxed means you have to pay income taxes plus an additional 10% early withdrawal penalty. In addition, most workplace retirement plans only allow you to tap funds if you have a documented hardship that's approved by the IRS. They include things like paying funeral expenses, paying medical bills, education costs, and buying a primary residence. However, you still have to pay taxes and that pesky 10% penalty on hardship distributions, which means a very big tax bill if you're under age 59 and a half. In addition, taking a hardship withdrawal means you can't make any new contributions to your retirement account for six months. However, there are two exceptions that allow you to withdraw money from a workplace retirement plan to buy a home and avoid taxes and penalties. So let's cover them. So the first is to take out a 401k or 403b loan. Now, if it's allowed by your retirement plan, and not all plans will allow for loans, but if it's allowed, you can borrow from yourself for any reason, including buying a home. A 401k loan has pros and cons that I'll review in just a moment. So that's the first option. The second option you have is to withdraw any Roth 401k or Roth 403b contributions. If you've got funds and an after-tax Roth at work, you can withdraw your original contributions at any time for any reason without taxes or a penalty. Remember, you pay taxes up front on those Roth contributions. So that means you don't have to pay tax on them again. You can take them out tax-free and penalty-free. However, withdrawals of untaxed Roth earnings would be subject to income taxes and that 10% penalty if you're younger than age 59 and a half. The earnings that are growing in the account have not yet been taxed. So pulling them out means, you know, they are subject to the regular rules. So should you take a 401k loan to buy a home? Let's talk about the loan option. A 401k loan allows you to withdraw a portion of your retirement funds and then repay it with an interest rate that is specified in your retirement plan. And it's typically, you know, a pretty competitive low rate. Paying interest 
is to make up for the lost growth while your loaned funds are not invested. So you're paying interest, but you're paying it to yourself. And the idea is that hopefully that will, you know, make up for the fact that you took that money out of the account temporarily. So if a retirement loan is allowed, you can only borrow half your vested balance up to $50,000. For example, let's say you've got an account balance of $60,000. Well, in that case, the maximum you can borrow is $30,000. If your balance is $200,000, then the most you could loan yourself is $50,000. So you can also have multiple loans, you know, over different years, different time periods, as long as you don't exceed that total. So you can't exceed that $50,000 total or, again, half your vested balance. Retirement loans typically have a repayment period of five years, but it can be longer if you use loan proceeds to buy a home. And you have to make payments in equal amounts that include the principal and the interest, and those will get deducted from your paycheck. If you repay a 401k or a 403b loan on time, you don't pay income tax or a penalty. That's pretty sweet. However, one of the biggest problems with taking a loan from your workplace retirement account is that the outstanding balance is considered an early withdrawal if you miss a payment deadline. In other words, If you don't pay on time, you would have to pay income taxes plus that 10% penalty if you're under 59 and a half on the entire unpaid loan amount. So those could be pretty steep financial consequences. Additionally, if you leave your job or let's say you get fired, any outstanding loan balance is treated as an early withdrawal unless you repay it in full by the next due date of your federal tax return. So that could create quite a bit of financial stress in your life if you're unable to repay that loan, you know, at a time where you just got fired from your job. So let's go through some of the advantages and disadvantages of taking a 401k loan to buy a home. So if you think that a retirement plan loan is right for you, we're going to cover four primary benefits. Number one is you receive funds quickly. Since there isn't a lender, you don't need to apply, submit an income documentation, or pay an underwriting fee. You just complete a loan document with the firm that manages your retirement plan. They process it, and then your funds are usually available within a week. The second benefit is that you pay a low interest rate. So the interest rate is typically lower than for other kinds of debt, like, you know, credit cards and personal loans. And as I mentioned, it's going right back into your own retirement account. And depending on what happens in the markets, repaying a retirement loan could leave you with more or less in the account. You know, it's hard to know what the future will bring. The third benefit is that you don't need a credit check. So since you are your own lender, credit is not a factor. The fourth benefit is that you can spend the money any way you want. When you take a 401k loan, how you spend that money is entirely up to you. However, as I previously mentioned, a loan to purchase a home may qualify you for a longer repayment term. So be sure to let your account custodian know if you're going to use any portion of a retirement loan to buy, build, or remodel a home. All right, so now let's talk about the disadvantages of taking a 401k loan to buy a home. We'll go through four here. The first is that you're going to miss potential market gains. I think this is, you know, the the big downside. The whole purpose of having a retirement account is to allow your money to grow for the future. Funds that you withdraw may miss significant potential investment growth. And even if you repay the loan on time with the interest, you could come up short depending on what happens in the markets. The second downside is that your interest paid is non-deductible. So the interest you pay on a retirement loan can't be deducted from your taxes. Therefore, if you plan to use those funds to buy a home or to pay for education, you'd likely be better off getting a mortgage or a student loan because those loans, those products allow you to deduct some of your interest from your taxable income, making it cost less on an after-tax basis. The third downside is that you could have an expensive penalty. If you take a 401k loan and something unforeseen happens, like 
having a financial hardship or losing your job, you could really end up in a tight spot. Separating from your employer for any reason means that your entire loan balance is due by the tax filing deadline. And as I mentioned, if you can't repay a retirement loan, it is considered an early withdrawal subject to taxes and that 10% penalty if you're younger than 59 and a half. So you want to be sure that all is well with your job before you take a retirement account loan. And the last downside is that you can't make new contributions. So even though loan payments go back to your retirement account through payroll deductions, they don't count as new contributions. So that means you're going to miss out on any employer matching. Plus, your plan may also specify that you can only contribute to your retirement plan once your loan is fully repaid. The bottom line is that I recommend borrowing from your workplace retirement plan or withdrawing Roth contributions as a last resort. You want to consider other options first, like getting a mortgage, getting a home equity loan, maybe a student loan, or even using money in your IRA, which we're going to talk about next. So let's switch gears and talk about how to use an IRA to buy a home. Since you've got more control over funds in a traditional or a Roth IRA, that may be a better account to tap than a workplace retirement plan when needed. There is a special IRA provision for first-time home buyers or anyone who has not owned a primary residence in the last two years. So you could have owned a home in the past, but let's say you've been renting the last two years. Well, the IRS is going to consider you a first-time homebuyer again. So this provision allows you to withdraw up to $10,000 from a traditional IRA for a home, and it allows you to skip that 10% early withdrawal penalty, even if you're younger than 59 and a half. But you will have to pay income taxes on that $10,000 or however much you take out. Now, if you have a Roth IRA, you can withdraw as much of your original contributions as you like at any time for any reason with no taxes or penalties. Remember, you've already paid taxes on those Roth contributions, so you don't have to pay taxes again. However, Early withdrawals of Roth earnings would be subject to taxes, but you could use up to $10,000 of earnings plus any contributions you want to take out to buy a home and avoid the 10% penalty if you're under 59 and a half. But the earnings portion would be taxable. And again, just like with the traditional IRA, you could pull out $10,000 from a Roth IRA of earnings as a first-time home buyer and skip that 10% early withdrawal penalty no matter your age. So the big question is, should you do this? Should you tap a retirement account to buy a home? Well, you know, you can use a retirement account to buy a home. That's, you know, the takeaway here. However, if you're younger than 59 and a half, withdrawing from a traditional 401k or a traditional 403b means you're going to pay taxes plus a 10% penalty, which is pretty expensive. So if you're a first-time home buyer or you haven't owned a home in the past two years, a better option might be to withdraw up to $10,000 from a traditional IRA. As I mentioned, you're going to pay taxes, but you'll skip that 10% early early withdrawal penalty. And let's say you're a couple and each of you has an IRA and you're buying a home together. You could each withdraw 10,000. So you, as a couple, you would bring $20,000 penalty free to buy a home. However, your taxable income will increase by the amount you withdraw. Now, if you have a Roth at work or a Roth IRA, that is definitely the least expensive and most flexible way to withdraw funds to buy a home. Again, you can always withdraw your original contributions tax and penalty free, or you can withdraw Roth IRA earnings up to $10,000 and avoid the 10% early withdrawal penalty. So the home buying strategy that's right for you depends on your retirement savings. You know, how well off are you? Are you ahead of the game? Are you really behind in retirement savings? And how much money you need to buy a home? Taking a retirement withdrawal could be a good move if your desired property appreciates significantly. Or let's say becoming a homeowner saves you a lot of money over the long term compared to renting. 
However, taking too much from your retirement account for a home could make it challenging to reach your savings goal or even cause you to have to delay retirement and work longer than you planned. So I want to encourage you to speak with a financial advisor about the pros and cons of tapping your retirement account to buy a home. Before we go, here's a quick reminder to subscribe to The Money Stack. It's my weekly newsletter. You can subscribe when you visit lauradadams.com. It's filled with money tips, tools, news, challenges, and things I enjoy. You can subscribe for free or become a paid member with access to live educational events. I want to thank you so much for listening to the show. Your downloads and your support really mean a lot. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to give it a five-star rating or review where you're listening, maybe on Spotify or the Apple Podcast app. That's all for now. I'll talk to you soon. Until then, here's to living a richer life. Money Girl is a quick and dirty tips podcast, and I want to thank our fantastic team. Steve Rickyberg audio engineers the show. Brandon Gaitchis is our director of podcasts. Holly Hutchins is our digital operations specialist. Morgan Christensen is our advertising operations specialist. And Davina Tomlin is our marketing and publicity associate. <music>